First question is from Coach Ken O. Should you lock out on exercises like a bench press? Pavel said you should lock out to build joint strength. I always thought you should come... I always thought you come just shy of lockout to keep tension on the muscle and off the joint. Yeah. So, um, yes, both are right. Sh- yeah. Well, Pavel is definitely right with what he's how he's explaining it because I know how he talks about it. Mm-hmm. Here, okay. How do you keep tension on the muscle and off the joint? That comes intrinsically. Now, can you do that with by shortening your range of motion? Yes, I guess. But the problem is now you're not strengthening the end range of motion. The problem isn't locking out. The problem is locking out and then not Resting keeping- on the joint. Yes. I also think that this is partly the fault of us and our peers. Oh, well, bodybuilders for sure. Yeah, I, I think even trainers and coaches. I was guilty of this because when you're teaching somebody, um, it, you know, it is hard to teach somebody to do something intrinsically, like keep tension on a right. muscle. Keep squeezing. Yeah, keep, 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 you know, keep you know, the bicep- tense while you open up in a bicep curl versus just saying, hey, you know what? Go almost all the way to the end and then come back up. Sure. You know that it forces them to keep tension in there because you don't allow them to rest on the joint. Mm-hmm. But the truth is we're robbing them of that full range of motion by not allowing them go all the way to the end range. But the key is that you don't relax on the joint. You don't lock out in a bench press and let the weight rest on your on your elbows in that lock position. You keep your chest tense, your shoulders tense while you're in, then your triceps all tense while you're in that fully extended position before you come back down. This is just another example of uh, certifications kind of putting in place safety measures, right? Like, so, you know, only going to 90 degrees, uh, not locking out fully because they want your your muscles to to take on most of the stress and the impact. Um, You know, there's a way to teach through this to be able to still provide that intrinsic tension in that support system, but that's a vital part of training. Mm. You can't cut it out. So, uh, you, you know, for me personally, I, I would lean more on the Pavel side of it, but it requires that education. It requires learning how to do that. Yeah. So imagine this, right? Imagine you're sitting on a, on a chair and then you have uh, an ottoman that you put your heels up on. So you put your legs out in front of you it, like an ottoman. And so in between you and the chair, there's some space, right? Now your kids come over and they sit on your knees. Okay. If I relax my legs, that's not going to feel good. That's that. That's my joint supporting them. If I tense up my legs and allow my muscles to support them, now I can support their weight and it not cause problems with my joints. Now that's directly opposing my joints. Uh, my joints' ability. When I'm straightening my arms out on a bench press or an overhead press, totally different. It's even safer. But you got to maintain tension. You can't press it up and then let the joint. What ends up happening is the ligaments end up holding the weight. And ligaments are, you know, they don't necessarily build strength that way. And if they fail, they break. If your muscles fail, uh, then you lower the weight. Mm -hmm. So it's safer. So yes, you want to go full range of motion, but keep tension the whole time. You're not relaxing at any point of the rep.